Hey guys, and welcome to another video session on pharmacology. In this video, we'll be dealing with osteoporosis and some of the treatments that are currently available. So let's begin by defining osteoporosis. What is osteoporosis? Well, it is a disease that is characterized by a decrease in bone mass, which results in thin and fragile bones that are easily fractured. It is most commonly seen in postmenopausal women and in the elderly population. That being said, uh, males can also have osteoporosis. So, what is the pathomechanisms that underlie this disease? Well, this is typically caused by two main mechanisms. One is a decrease in osteoblast activity, and this is caused by a decrease in estrogen, which is why it's most commonly seen in postmenopausal women and in the elderly population. Now, the other main cause of osteoporosis is an increase in osteoclast activity, and this is typically seen in patients who are hypocalcemic uh, because of the increase in parathyroid hormones which breaks down bone in order to maintain calcium levels in the blood. Moving on to treatments. As I mentioned earlier, there are two main causes of osteoporosis, uh, an increase in osteoclast or a decrease in osteoblast. So the main question we should be asking ourselves here is, what kind of drugs can we give in order to increase osteoblast and decrease osteoclast? And the first of these drugs is a drug class known as recombinant parathyroid hormone. Now I know some of you guys watching this video is probably asking yourselves right now, why in the world would you use PTH? I mean, didn't you just explain a second ago that PTH is secreted in the body in order to increase bone resorption? Wouldn't you just make the patient worse by giving them this drug? Well, actually, in recent years, we discovered that low intermittent dosages of parathyroid hormone can actually stimulate the activity of osteoblast. This is important because recombinant PDH is the only class of drugs that are used to treat osteoporosis that can actually regenerate the bone. All other drugs are merely able to prevent the bone from getting worse. They can actually make the bone better. And some of these anti-resorptive drugs include uh, estrogen therapy, uh, serums like veloxifene, uh, bisphosphonate, and calcitonin. I'm not going to go into much detail on most of these anti-resorptive drugs. The only one I'm going to actually explain is the bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates are pyrophosphate analogs that essentially bind to the extracellular matrix of the bone and cause osteoclast to undergo apoptosis. How does it do that? Well, there are two main mechanisms. The earlier generations essentially disguised themselves as ATP analogs and caused apoptosis of the osteoclast. The later generations okay, have an extra nitrogen molecule that's bind to the bisphosphonates and they work by inhibiting an enzyme called farnesyl diphosphate synthase. This enzyme is involved in prenylations of many pro-survival proteins in the, in the cell, which means if we can inhibit phenyl diphosphate synthase, we can inhibit the activation of these pro-survival proteins and therefore cause apoptosis. Now finally, okay, I'm going to talk about some combination therapies. There's not a whole lot on this slide. The main message I'm trying to give you guys is you can't randomly combine drugs together, okay? For example, uh, parathyroid hormone, when used in conjunction with bisphosphonates, actually make the patient worse because it's been proven that when these two drugs are used together, they actually decrease the efficacy of the therapy. Whereas, if you combine PTH and estrogen or SERMs, you can actually improve the condition of the, of the patient, as is proven already, that combination therapies involving PTH and estrogen actually improve the efficacy of treatments. So that basically sums up our lesson on osteoporosis. I hope it's helped you out a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions, remember, don't forget to post it in the comments below. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. In our next video, we'll be dealing with uh, estrogen-dependent breast cancer and some of the treatments that are available for that. So look forward to it, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.